Okay, good evening, class. Welcome to your Monday lecture. If you're not watching this on a Monday, then here is your late slip that I drew. In today's lecture, we're talking about movies, but not just any ordinary movies. We're covering iconic movies. Now, iconic movies are subjective because a classic movie for some people is Titanic, whereas for others, it's literally Shrek, which oddly enough, these two films have the exact same score on IMDb. But what makes a movie iconic? Is it the plot, the cinematography, the vastly overused rags to riches arc? Well, that is a good question that I don't know the answer of because I'm not a film major. But for me, I'm heavily drawn to movies for the fashion and I was like, what would these movie characters dress like if they were Gen Z? And that is what this video is. I feel like I should have had a stronger conclusion than that, but hopefully my editing makes up for it. I don't know why Dion's going out with a high school boy. They're like dogs. You have to clean them and feed them, and they're just like these nervous creatures that jump and slobber all over you. Ew! Get off of me! Ugh, as if! Hello, and I wonder why. Okay, hey guys. So this first look, of course, is inspired by the iconic movie Clueless. Now, this is not the first time I've spoken about Clueless on my channel, nor will it be the last. For some reason, I've always just like adored this movie, which when you think about it actually is quite strange because for me, I'm usually drawn to movies with characters that I personally can relate to or like maybe I look up to them in some way. But when it comes to Cher, I think the only thing we have in common is the fact that we're both versions who can't drive. Well, granted, actually, I went on the highway for the first time last week after having my permit for about two years and from that lovely experience i can say that i will not be going back on it was absolutely terrifying the whole thing was stressful but i think i finally understand why they say life is a highway i actually took the pleasure to rewatch this movie for the thousandth time and i came to the conclusion that elton could really use a lesson on consent i feel like rewatching this movie as an adult you realize how disgusting his character is also dion's relationship with marie was most definitely toxic i could probably write a 12 page essay on both of those topics but i think Cher said the best when she compared high school boys to dogs. You know, you really do look a lot better without all that black shit on your eyes. Hey, I like that black shit. This looks a lot better. <laughs> oh, please. Why are you being so nice to me? Because you're letting me. Before we get into the movie analysis, I just wanted to say that I actually found the exact same style of brown boots Claire wore in the movie, but I decided to go with platforms because I wanted to be edgy, okay? Leave me alone. Now the first thing that I want to say about this movie is that if you haven't watched it yet, clear your schedule for next Saturday night because we're all gonna have a sleepover and we're gonna watch this. If you made plans, then cancel them. I, I'm sorry, I don't make the rules. I think what I loved about this movie was how simple yet complex it was at the same time. Like when you look at the movie cover and compare it to any Marvel movie cover, you'll notice that it isn't anything breathtaking. Like it's literally just five teens huddled together in front of a plain white background and three words written in red bolded aerial font. But even with the simple movie cover and a very small cast, this movie was able to impact so many layers of being a teenager. Now this isn't my favorite movie of all time, but regardless, it's still timeless. I feel like it was the beginning of the coming of age movie trend. Sadly though, I couldn't relate to any of the characters in this movie. Hopefully I'm not the only one, but I just didn't see myself in any of them, which is probably why I didn't exactly love this movie. But what I did like about The Breakfast Club was the message it had. I feel like we categorize ourselves into these cliques based on status or hobbies, but when you actually sit down and listen to someone, you realize that you're not as different from others as you may think. You can't even pass your driver's test. Because you wouldn't let me practice The way enough. that you work, or the, or the way that you don't work, you're not even worth state tuition, Christine. My name is Ladybird. Uh, well, actually, it's not, and it's ridiculous. Call me Ladybird like Christine. you said you would. Just, you should just go to City College. You know, with your work ethic, just go to City College, and then to jail, and then back to City College, and then maybe you'd learn to pull yourself up and not expect everybody to do everything. <laughs> I have to admit that I actually only recently watched this movie, and by recent, I mean literally Friday night. I think the only reason I knew of this movie was because of that three second clip of Timothy Chalamet saying, good girl. Can I get your number? We were looking to set up some more gigs down there. Definitely. 
It, it's my parents' number. You don't have a cell phone? Nah. Good girl. Yeah, I need to touch some grass, but thankfully that is not the premise of this video. I did some research and found that the whole film was actually filmed on a tripod and a dolly, which I think gave the film like this human feel to it. And I also think this was the first time I've seen a complicated familial relationship portrayed on screen in such a real way. I like how in the movie you get to see from the perspective of both Lady Bird and her mother. In a lot of teenage coming of age films, the parents are always poorly written and just completely unrealistic. Like they're always so one dimensional and the writers love playing into the overbearing mother trope. But because of the dual perspective in this movie, I feel like I was actually able to sympathize with both of them. I don't know, this movie is still fresh, so I can't put my feelings into words yet, but it just, it made me feel. I have this theory that if you cut all her hair off, she'd look like a British man. Yeah, I know you told me that one before. Okay. Hey, I'm having an art show, so you should take a night off from your double life. I want you to see it. Goodness. What is that smell? Oh, Regina gave me some perfume. You smell like a baby prostitute. Thanks. I think he's coming Okay, I know this outfit is very simple, but for some reason, it was so hard for me to come up with. The top was the closest thing I could find to a red long sleeve, and I tried my best to give it like this Y2K feel, so I'm sorry if I completely missed the mark, but it was the best I could do. I haven't watched Mean Girls in a while, actually, but from what I can remember, I love this movie. I honestly wish I could have been a teen in like the early 2000s so that I can head on over to the movie theater and watch this on the big screen. Unfortunately, I was two years old, and the only thing I was watching at the time was Dora the Explorer. I remember watching this movie for the first time and just hoping that they'd make a second movie and when I say second movie I mean with the exact same characters we do not speak of the steaming pile of trash Miss Melanie Mayron tried to direct anyway I think it's good they stuck with one movie because it did what it needed to do and I know the message and the overall tone of this movie isn't as deep as the other ones in this video but I still think you can learn a few things from this film like I was actually able to relate to Katie when it came to putting your interests and hobbies to the side in fear of being judged by other people but overall everything in this movie was iconic from the Halloween costumes to the Jingle Bell Rock and even the catchphrases. I just, I loved it all. I just finished filming. The last time I did one of these videos, a few people were asking where I put my bed, right? Because I don't even know how you guys noticed. Anyways, whenever I do these videos, I literally just take my whole room, like this, anything that's here. I basically move my whole bed to the side. Now, if you're wondering where my mattress is, I literally move it to my sister's room along with my blankets and like stuffed animals and just stuff I didn't want to fit in this room. And that's practically it. The first couple times I did the whole bedroom move, it was actually very tiring, but now it's like a good, it's a good workout. I get my cardio in by doing this. So I'm not mad at it. It was annoying, but I'm not mad at it. Anyway, I hope you guys all enjoyed and I will see you in next week's video. Bye.